Hey everyone, understanding motion blur really changed the way my motion graphics looked in After Effects. Now turning on motion blur is easy, it's the click of a button, but how do we increase motion blur? How do we decrease it? How do we wrap our minds around shutter angle and shutter phase and all those degree sliders that we have in the advanced settings? Well, that's what I want to explore with you in this tutorial. So let's talk about motion blur inside of After Effects right after this. I've created a brand new composition that I've titled Motion Blur. I'm using the HDTV 108024 preset, and my frame rate is set to 24. Now this is important because just like in film, the lower the frame rate, the more motion blur you have. The higher the frame rate, the more crisp the motion is. I'm gonna be using 24 for this tutorial. My duration is set to one minute and my background color is set to black. Now I've created in this timeline a green circle that moves back and forth like this. Now there's no motion blur natively applied to this, and this is because we haven't turned on the motion blur checkbox. The motion blur checkbox can be found right here. It's these stack of three circles. If I click on this, it turns on the motion blur for that particular layer, and you can see that here in my composition panel. Now it also turns on what I call the breaker. If these are switches, then this is the breaker that controls all of the switches for the house, so to speak. And just like a breaker in your house, you can turn your lights on and off all you want, but if the breaker isn't on, those switches do nothing. In the latest version of After Effects, when you turn on your switch, it turns on the breaker automatically. This isn't always the case. And so make sure that this breaker is also turned on. It should be blue and that's gonna activate all the motion blurs. Now this is handy because if your computer's having a hard time rendering the motion blur, you don't have to turn on or off the motion blur checkboxes per layer. You can just turn off the breaker and see this without motion blur for a while, and then turn the breaker back on when you're ready to render it. True story, when I was first learning After Effects, I had no idea this checkbox existed. So I was actually keyframing directional blur. Don't be me, use this checkbox. So we've turned motion blur on, but what is controlling how blurry this is? How do we know how much motion blur is being applied? Well, for that, we have to come up to composition in our menu bar and come down to the composition settings options. Now, we were just here when I was showing you my basic composition settings, but we also have our advanced tab. Click on advanced. And this now introduces us to our motion blur settings. And we have two things here to worry about, shutter angle and shutter phase. And these are in degrees, and there's a reason why. In old school film cameras, the shutter speed was a physical mechanism. It was a wheel that would rotate 24 times a second and expose that given frame of film. Now this is important to understand because this wheel had a certain, it looks like a piece of pie cut out of it, that when rotating, the degree of that piece of pie would dictate how much light enters that particular frame. And this is shutter angle. The bigger this piece of pie, the higher the angle, the more light would be exposed to the film. And the more light exposed to the film would result in more blur. So the smaller this angle, the less light is reaching that particular frame of film, which means the crisper the motion. Now, if you're like me and your background is in video production, you understand shutter speed to be a fraction of a second, one over and a number. On most cameras, they're lazy. They don't even show you the one over. They just give you like shutter speed 320. It's like, well, what is that? It's one three twentieths of a second. Now, in most cases, you want your shutter speed to be one over and two times your frame rate which for 24 frames per second would be 1 48th, or most cameras show you 1 50th. The reason for this was to give you natural looking motion blur, true to life motion blur. And this formula is important and it translates to after effects as well. But instead of fractions of a second, we're talking about degrees. And these two actually do correlate. 
think about it. If we're talking about how long a frame is exposed for in fractions of a second, that could also translate to the amount of degrees that pie slice is exposing that particular frame. So the higher the shutter angle, the lower the shutter speed in terms of its fraction of a second. And that's the way these two correlate. So when we go into After Effects, the first thing that I did as a video producer is I increased that to decrease the motion blur, but it doesn't work that way. The higher the shutter angle, the more blurry things are gonna get. Now let's jump back into After Effects and take a look at the other option that we have. So if I increase my shutter angle, it's gonna be more blurry. Now, physically speaking, if we're talking about wheels and cuts of pie out of this, the highest we should theoretically ever be able to go in a real wheel would be 360 degrees. That would be like no wheel. Everything is just exposed all the time. But in After Effects, we can unrealistically go beyond this. In fact, we can go beyond this quite a bit. I think up to 720. Yeah. And 720 gives us a massive amount of blur. So this is unrealistic, but it's kind of fun that we can start to break physics and increase our motion blur even more. And the negative is also true. If I go below 180, we're gonna to start to reduce our motion blur down to zero, which is absolutely no motion blur. So for realistic motion blur, 180 is the number that you want here. So what's shutter phase? Now, normally shutter phase should be the negative half of your shutter angle. So if my shutter angle is 180 degrees, my shutter phase should be negative 90. And this goes back to that formula that I talked about earlier. This produces natural looking motion blur. But the shutter phase is the centering of the blur. And so if it's the negative half of our shutter angle, we're getting blur on both sides of the object. If I decrease this, it's changing the blur to the left of things. And if I increase this, it changes the blur to the right of things. Now I almost never adjust my shutter phase to be anything other than the negative half of my shutter angle. This means if I max out my shutter angle to be 720, my shutter phase should be negative 360. And that allows now a perfectly centered motion blur, giving me blur on both the left and the right. I'm gonna hit okay. And now I have a really whacked out, but very blurry circle. So why does all this matter? Well, there are plenty of times where you want to increase or decrease the motion blur of a given layer. Sometimes if it's moving kind of slow, but you want it to be blurrier, you're gonna to wanna to increase that shutter angle quite a bit. But the important thing to take away here is kind of the mathematical equation that we've discussed. One over two times the frame rate for basic like camera shutter speed, or in terms of after effects, you want the shutter phase to be the negative half of whatever your shutter angle is. That correlation is what's going to help you result in natural looking motion blur. And that really should be our goal. But this is After Effects and natural looking things are kind of what's fun to break. So have fun experimenting with motion blur inside of After Effects. Thanks for joining me on another tutorial as we delve into this infinite thing called After Effects. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel so you get notified of my future tutorials. Otherwise, happy creating.